Hey, how you doing? Justin here today. We are checking out Dance the Night Away by the Mavericks, which is a fantastic song for beginners. It's only got two chords, and they're two of the first chords I teach in my beginners course. How appropriate. So uh, the two chords that we need for this song are D chord and A chord. And if you're not sure about how to play those chords, you want to go and check out the lessons on my beginners course. because It's a bit more about playing the song than how to play the chords. But there's really comprehensive lessons there, all free on the site. Go and check it out. Uh, and I definitely recommend as well doing some one minute changes exercises where you're changing between the D and the A. Because before you can play songs, you really need to have your kind of chord changes fast enough not to have to stop between strums. Okay? So, Whenever you learn a song as a beginner, what I recommend you start off with is just doing simple four down strums to the bar. So strumming a down on one, two, three, and four. And really what you're aiming for is to not have to pause the strumming between the chords, okay? So what you're looking for is to be able to do the D chord, four down strums, and then change to the A, but without any stop in between, right? You want that strumming hand to be remaining really consistent all the time. Okay? You don't, what you don't want to do, and what's really, really common if this is you, don't worry about it because most beginner guitar players start like this where you stop and then you have to move the fingers around and then start again. So what you're really aiming for when you're learning these tunes, these early songs, is being able to remove that pause. Okay? Even if the chords get a little bit sloppy, you want to try and push through it and just be able to get there. So if I keep the rhythm going, and, I, and the chord doesn't quite go, go right, but we're still there, okay? And then we go to the back to the D. That's what you want to do, is trying to keep that strumming hand being really consistent, because it's such a big deal. That having the rhythm consistent is the biggest thing, it's the biggest hurdle, and it's the most important thing to learn as a beginner guitar player. If the chords go a little bit wonky, a lot of people won't notice. The rhythm goes wrong, people notice straight away, okay? So once you know your D chord and your A chord, the, first, the next step is to do exactly what I was doing there, because this song is just a bar of D and a bar of A, bar of D, bar of A, all of the way through the whole tune. So what I'd recommend is you just start with your, trying to get the D to the A, just all down strums like that. And then if you can, have a go at playing along with the record. Okay, now I should point out as well, to play along with the recording, the original recording, you need to put a capo or capo on at the second fret. Okay, suits my voice a little bit better to not have a capo, and it's easier for you guys to understand as well. But if you want to play along with the record, you just put a capo on the second fret, and then you move all of the chords up two frets as well. It's you know, there's lessons on using a capo as well as part of the beginners course, and definitely something that I recommend that you get into doing because it's fun. You get to play along with the original recording, and that's part of the reason why I teach these nice songs, beginner songs, you know, that you can play along with because it's it's great to just get into it, you know. Um, but as well, this kind of tune, because it's so simple, is a nice one to have a go at seeing yourself as well. So if you're going to do that, the very intro is just going to change between the D and the A chord. I think it's a four bar progression, goes around three times, so 12 bars total. And then when the vocal comes in, it's D. Here comes my A chordness to D. And then back to A. Back to D, right back to A, it should have D, and back to A, to D, cause now she's A and I am D, that sounds a little bit funny, the last line of the verse, D, and she can't A, a thing to D and back to A and then we're into the chorus for D I just wanna A the night to D and back to A hopefully you're getting the idea now back to D with Senor A chord who can D and back to A 
back today. Right now the acorns looking deep. I'm back to I. Back to day, just like an acorn morning deep. And back to A. You get the idea, just playing along nice and simple with the four down strums, definitely before you start trying to play any other, you know, strumming patterns or anything like that. Just keep it real simple, try and play along with your recording if you can, just because it's loads of fun, it's inspiring to have the whole kind of band around you while you play. But pretty soon you're going to want to do something with the strumming to kind of make it a little bit more interesting. And this kind of tune again, because it's so simple chordally, it's a great one for trying out different strumming patterns. Don't feel like you have to do the one that I'm going to show you, um, or that one, whatever. You know, just try some different strumming patterns, particularly if you've got a jam buddy. If you've got somebody that you can play guitar with at the same time, you get them playing one strumming pattern and you try a different one is a really really cool way of kind of mixing it up a little bit um, now the one that the, the strumming pattern that i hear the most clearly on the record because there's a few different layers is playing even eighth notes so down up down up down up down up one and two and three and four and and i should point out as well this isn't something really for a stage one beginner right? so if you're really new to guitar you just started off in the course just be happy with doing your four down strums to the bar because trying to do this now is going to be a little bit tricky. And this is what I try and do in these lessons is show you a kind of a basic version and show you some things that are more advanced that you can come back to and, and make the song progress with you as a guitar player. I think that's a really nice thing to have uh, available. So when you're going to do even eighth notes, so one and two and three and four and, you're going to do on the D chord, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, and then you're going to change the A. Now, to make that change between the upstroke on the D and then the downstroke on the next A is pretty much impossible. I mean, I could possibly do it if I really, really tried, but it would sound wrong. Because actually what we're used to hearing on that and after four, so the last upstrung before we change chords, is actually that, open strings. So what we end up with, if I do it slowly, it sounds really weird, but I'll speed it up in a sec so you can hear it actually works pretty good. On the D chord, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, just no fingers because I'm changing chords. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, open again. Okay, wouldn't matter if you're using the anchor finger technique, are you using your first finger to anchor as I explained in the beginner's course. Um, you might want to leave it there and it doesn't make any difference when you do the upstroke if you've left that first finger there because when you speed it up to full speed, Don't notice it. I'm exaggerating it now. And it doesn't matter. It, it actually happens on most records that you hear with that kind of strumming pattern. There will be those open strings there, but we're, we're used to the sound of it. It doesn't sound bad at full speed. It just sounds a bit weird if you're a beginner. A lot of people I've met over the years have said, you know, I can't change chords fast enough there. Well, you don't need to. Be cool with those that last up strum just being open strings. So that's the first thing to kind of get down is the even eighth note strumming. So just on the D, one and two and three and four and to the A, two, D, two, three, four, A. Okay, so that's the first thing to try and get down. Just trying to keep the strumming nice and even. Trying to make sure the chords are nice and clean when you're playing them and it's not too buzzy. And once you can do that, the next thing that you really want to add in is an accent. Okay, now accents are a really, really important part of rhythm guitar because it, it really kind of brings life to them. And the particular one that we use here is called accenting the backbeat. It's very, very common in, in most rhythm guitar styles to play beats two and four a little bit harder than the other ones. So instead of, excuse me, this, one and two and three and four and. I just do it like this with the chord changes. Sounds a little bit kind of flat, but if we start accenting two and four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. It's quite subtle, it's not much, you don't have to really thrash it out or anything like that, but putting that little accent in it just it, it makes it work better, it makes it kind of groovier and sound nicer, and particularly for a tune like this. Part of the thing that you're going for there is, is putting that accent on two and four and relaxing, okay? Because this is one of those things that's always, uh, 
I found confusing when I was a beginner myself and I was, all my teachers saying, you've got to relax more, you've got to, you know, it's like, well, it's easy for you to say that because you can already do it, but I'm struggling, you know, but there's something about forcing yourself to relax, particularly with rhythm, that makes it feel better. When it's tense, it's kind of, I'm, I'm trying to deliberately tense my arms now while I'm doing this. It sounds kind of rigid, even though it's right. But as soon as I'm relaxed now, feels better. People that, that are listening to it will feel it sounds more relaxed. It's a really weird thing, but it's, it's definitely how it works. And you can concentrate on that just by thinking, relaxing your shoulders and your arms particularly, and really focusing on kind of being cool and relaxed with it. And I don't mean cool like personality-wise, but just, you know, be easy with it. Make it, let it feel easy, and it'll actually sound loads better. So, uh, I think that's all I've got to mention with this song. Oh, one more thing, sorry. If you get the opportunity to jam with someone else, okay, so, which is a fantastic thing, again, if you're a beginner, if there's somebody that you know that's learning guitar too, getting together every few weeks and playing some songs together is a really, really great experience. It'll really make you improve a lot faster than if you play on your own uh, all the time. Um, and one of the things that uh, I think sounds really cool, because there's a, a part, one of the parts on the, the record is doing off beats, which is just the up strums, like one, and two, and three, and four, and, okay? So if what, you get one guitar player doing this, the other one doing this one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three so just the ups kind of sounds a bit weird by itself but in conjunction with another guitar part it sounds really cool so that's one of the things that you, you should try out again you know and if you get the chance to jam trying out different rhythm patterns and different ways of of playing together at the same time it's a really really cool thing to do so uh, I hope you really enjoyed this lesson and you'll find plenty more hints and tricks for beginners on my website the beginners course go and check it out I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon you take care of yourselves bye bye